this uh, prestigious oration, we have none other than uh, Dr. G. B. Sattur to uh, maybe, uh, give the oration on this name. Dr. G. B. Sattur, please could, could you please yes. tell us? Uh, Dr. G. B. Sattur, born in Darwad in a highly respected family, com completed primary and secondary education in Kannada medium schools. After completing PUC in Karnataka Science College in Darwad, Dr. Sattur joined Karnataka Medical College. A journey to, of the medical career after getting first rank in PUC for the first time in the history of Karnataka University in biology section. So wonderful, sir. So he's completed his MBBS in KMC Hubli, Dr. Chak Satur, uh, rank holder throughout the medical career. He regularly participated in extracurricular activities like the annual gatherings. After completing MD in general medicine, he proceeds to the UK in 1997, popularly known as the Walking Harrison in UK. He stayed for six years in UK and gained wide experience in diabetes and emergency medicine. He completed MRCP in 1981, returned to India in 1983 and started private practice as a consulting physician and diabetologist. He completes 36 years of medical practice and he was honorary professor of medicine in SDM Dental College for the last seven years. Dr. G.B. Sadhur, an astute clinician acclaimed academician and a gifted speaker and teacher par excellence. So Dr. Sattu, known as vast clinical acumen, uh, has delivered more than 200 lectures in CMEs and conferences, received Best Speaker Award during the 17th International Cardiovascular Conference in Kathmandu, Nepal in November 2019. His clinics in SDM was a great attraction to the students and drawn to his teachings like an hand to the sugar. Dr. G.B. Sattu, with a gallery of honors, awards and applause, he was awarded the Fellow of Indian College of Cardiology in 1995, received the prestigious Dr. B.C. Roy Award in 2018, and the prestigious Suvarna Karnataka Rajyats Award in 2005, National Vikasa Sangam Award in December 2018, honored by Munawali Veera Shaiva Samaj in 1990. Also, Akhila Karnataka Brahman Samaj Award for Excellence in Medical Services. He was awarded the Pratibha Puraskar by Gajana Nutsav Samiti and the IMA Sugar Doctors Award in 2002 and felicitated in 2002 by the INA State Medical Conference in 2003. He also received the Lifetime Achievement Award by the Beladam IMA awarded Vaitya Shiromani Prashasti in ILKL during the Mega Free Medical Checkup Camp, many regional awards for various NGOs and organizations in his name. Dr. Sattu is Governing Council of Karnataka Institute of Medical Sciences, Ubli, for the consecutive last three years, was Chairman Association of Physicians of India, Karnataka State Chapter, between 2018 to 19. Dr. G. B. Sattu, a social avatar and more, Dr. Sattu conducted 1 lakh people public diabetes awareness camps during the August 2012 and 2013, which is acclaimed as the first time event in Karnataka. A mega free BP checkup camp also conducted for BP awareness, conducted more than 150 free diabetes BP camps in North Karnataka. In December 2023, the Asha Diabetic Trust and Research Foundation adopting Baihati village near Hubli for support, study and prevalence, awareness and control of diabetes and hypertension for a period of last five years. Dr. Satur is academic coordinator, Lipid Association and was appointed member COVID clinical expert committee by the government of Karnataka and contributed immensely. He's got more than 45 TV appearances and many pop social media and print media. He actively participated in forming Indian consensus for the lipid management. A free booklet on diabetes is given to more than 1 lakh diabetic patients. More than 300 lectures are delivered in various NGOs to promote good health and spread awareness about heart attack, diabetes and high BP. So, Dr. Sattur offers free consultation to defense personnel of and their parents and children. Dr. Sattur has been Chairman Capicom, Organizing Secretary CSI, Rupli, Chairman IMA State Conference 2020-2002, Joint Secretary ABA Conference, 
and Dr. Sathur has national and international journals publications in his name. He also co-authored textbook clinical medicine in dental practice and introduced nebulizer treatment. Dr. Sathur and his family, so earlier a doctor's family, married to uh, Mrs. Kavita, plus with two sons, Dr. Mithun, who is MCH Neurosurgery, assembly in the USA, and Dr. Amit, uh, who is MDDM Cardiology, and is an interventional cardiologist in Umbri. So with this, I would like to felicitate Dr. G.B. Sattu for his achievements in his career. cardiovascular risk. ASCVD is uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. 
and there was a def definite risk reduction. But even then, even though you put the patients on statin, look at that, staggering 55 to 70% of the patients did not reach the desired levels of LDL cholesterol. But that leads to the point that there are other atherogenic lipoproteins circulation, circulating in the blood apart from LDL. And they happen to be um, these triglyceride rich lipoprotein remnants, VLDA and IDL lipoprotein little a. These non LDLs, so to say, have an importance in somebody who has elevated triglyceride. And we know that atherogenic dyslipidemia, which is common in diabetics in India, a um, lot of TG higher levels are seen in large number of our patients. So this is very important to remember this thing. What is non-HDL cholesterol? Why has it become a head marker? Because extremely easy. It doesn't need your prefrontal cortex. Your kindergarten child can do it. Non-HDL cholesterol is nothing but total cholesterol minus HDL cholesterol. And if you have, just look at it. If you just see this uh, chart, you can see that you can see that the plasma proteins on the top. If you see VLDL to LPA, all of them have ApoB. ApoB is an, a strong atherogenic molecule. All VLDL, IDL, LDL, they all contain one molecule of ApoB each, and hence they are atherogenic. If you just come to chylomicron remnant, that is FOP48 derived from the gastrointestinal tract. And you can see that here, they are all triglyceride rich lipoprotein. VLDL is very rich in triglyceride. So they all form the non HDL cholesterol. Therefore, it is very easy. Non cholesterol, non HDL cholesterol is total cholesterol minus HDL cholesterol. We have now got remnant cholesterol. Lot of attention is now is being paid to VLDL remnants, cholesterol remnants in the last five years. And that is nothing but in this total cholesterol minus HDL cholesterol, you minus the LDL cholesterol. What is the evidence for non-HDL? We just have a look at this slide. Look at the leftmost corner. For a hazard ratio of LDL of 0.44, where the LDL has been reduced to less than 50, if you just see the red column, the non-HDL is at 0.57, indicating although you achieve LDL of 50, you still have residual risk. I think that's what needs to be realized. Apart from that, you have meta-analysis of around 62,000 statin-treated patients, eight trials, 4S, AFCAPS, lipid trial, CARS, TNT, IDEAL, SPARKLE, JUPITER. And all of them showed one standard deviation between LDL, APOB, and non-HDL. You can see that non-HDL was 16%, indicating that ACVD risk was greater for non-HDL than for LDL or even APOB, although APOB is a significant component of non-HDL cholesterol. This is a normal, epidemi normal epidemic individual. You can see that LDL has a very large proportion of ApoB to be followed by the VLDL and the IDL. Lipoprotein little a, which is almost takes a malignant form in Indians, uh, has a very little amount of ApoB, but it can create a havoc. So it also now this slide very vividly shows that why LDL is a primary target because large amount of atherogenic FOB is in LDLC. Now the fasting is not required. There was a time when Dr. Manohar could tell his patient from uh, uh, Tumkur to come next morning. He would make him stay in a hotel paying around 5,000 and bring him to the lab around 7 o'clock in the morning and I would ask the Gangavati patient to come and hang on in one of the hotels and next morning come for a fasting. No more fasting lipid profiles. Take a random lipid profile as the patient walks into your clinic. This is meant by, mainly by the joint consciences of the European Atherosclerosis Society and the European Federation of the Clinical Chemistry and Laboratory and Medicine. All this was spearheaded by none other than Dr. Nordisgaard. One of our international uh, conferences, 
and uh, these points that I have made here are right from the horse's mouth. Non-fasting lipids can be used to assess the risk of ASCVD. Non-fasting has got total cholesterol, HDL, and they are similar to fasting. Now LDL can be measured directly, does not depend on TG. Food intake, how much does it increase really? All HDL, HD, LDL, and cholesterol are increased only by 5%. What about your triglycerides? They increase by 15%. That's one of the reasons why postprandial hypertriglyceridemia is gaining a lot of importance as an important risk marker or a risk factor, if, if you'd like to use that word. So we saw non -HDL, what non-HDL cholesterol is. And unfortunately, although LDL is a major component of non-HDLC, focusing on non-HDLC maintains focus on LDLC which is the primary target, which means you need not go in for LDL cholesterol. You can straightway do non-HDL cholesterol. And you know that most of the Indians, why there are more myocardial infarctions in Indians uh, who have a normal LDL cholesterol uh, in, the, in, in, your, in your clinic when you test them, but these normal LDL cholesterol apparently have got a lot of small, dense LDL. The small dense NCDL LDL is highly heterogenic compared to the buoyant large LDL particles. But unfortunately, the LDL <coughs> readings that you get in the lab does not tell about the LDL particle size. That is still in the experimental stage, but the time we try to decide LDL particle size, we can easily target patients who have a normal, apparently looking normal LDL, but they have very high non, uh, very high, yes, small dense LDL. This is 2016 consensus when the Lipid Association of India started declaring that non-HDL cholesterol as a co-primary target. And this is in 1920, 20, when we released the consensus for Indian dyslipidemia because Indians are uh, very different from the Western counterparts in our phenotype. And here, we almost consolidated the fact that non-HDL cholesterol is a co-primary target. Now let us look at some of the evidences. Let us look at some of the meta-analysis. 14 statin trials, 7 fibrin trials, 6 niacin trials, one each of bile acid diet and ideal bypass showed that when you use statin as a monotherapy, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between percent non-HDL lowering and CHD reduction. What do I mean by that? Look at the, the left end here. You can see the WASCOPS. WASCOPS trial come down here. Look at the 25% non-HDLC reduction and look at one to one 25% CHD reduction. So when you use statins, the CHD reduction is equal to the amount of the um, uh, uh, non-HDL uh, reduction. Another program which said non-HDL is good is about the Lipid Research Clinic program, 4,000 odd patients for 19 years, and finally showed non-HDL was a strong predictor. Epic Norfolk study, less than 200 milligrams of triglyceride. SHEP study, more than 400 milligrams of triglycerides rely on non-HDL rather than LDL. You know that more than 400 milligrams of triglycerides, you cannot calculate LDL cholesterol. You need to do direct LDL cholesterol. Inderhard study, now one of the largest studies, 52 countries. What's wonderful about the study is 15,000 EMI patients, but almost 15,000 non-cardiovascular EMI patients. And what did it show? Apart from all points, FOB bar, FOA1, this ratio became an extremely effective, modifiable risk factor for an MI. So since non-HDL cholesterol measures cholesterol component of all FOBs that you saw, it correlates well with the circulating levels of FOB, meaning you don't need to calculate FOB unless you are interested in lipids and want to do some extra studies. Now this is again a risk consortium. Almost around 5 lakh odd patients showed less than 2.6 2 of a non-HDL to more than 5.7. Everywhere you could see the risk reduction of coronary artery disease. And, and hence it is pertinent that all laboratories should report non-HDL cholesterol in addition to 
conventional reporting of LDL and TG. Please raise your hands. How many lakhs of viewers report non HDL cholesterol? Raise your hands. Okay, from today onwards, after this, you are going to set your lab to report non HDL cholesterol. You are not going to calculate. Your kindergarten son is going to calculate. Give him total cholesterol, give him HDL cholesterol, he will minus it and give you non HDL cholesterol. And that goes on your reporting. Now, of course, what about non HDL versus LDL? FOB versus non HDL. The women's heart study, health professional follow up study, non HDL was definitely a better predictor. Now, regarding diabetes, we know all this. Um, many diabetic, more male, female patients have dyslipidemia, and the non HDL was very much supported by these four studies the Framingham cohort study, the Framingham offspring study. The lipid research clinic program follow up study and the multiple risk factor interventional trial. Now, if, when you see the joint distribution, almost of around 19,381 patients, you could see that the almost identical LDL levels, say of around 148 in non diabetics, were also corresponding with the diabetics, indicating the CV risk in diabetics increased with increase in non HDL but not with. LDL cholesterol on multivariate analysis. This study from one of my senior colleagues, Dr. Narsingan from South India, presence of elevated non-HDL in patients with TM. They came out with the conclusion, despite getting good LDL cholesterol, 47 patients had CD events, which means they had a residual risk. So they recommended do the non-HDL cholesterol in all your patients. So calculated LCL, the LDL cholesterol excludes the cholesterol triglyceride rich lipoprotein. Therefore, no calculating by the feed walls formula in your laboratory. Direct LDL is available, spend more money, charge a bit more. Don't, not necessary to save the patient's money. They can spend it if they want to get better. So get a direct LDL done in your laboratory. Now just to make you understand what are small dense LDL, if you look at this slide, you can see on the left side is no diabetes, on the right side is diabetes. Look at LDL particles, they are equal. LDL particles on the left, non-diabetic, are large, buoyant, with one FOB. On the left, you have many more LDL molecules, many more FOBs. What does that mean? Suppose you have got a 2 kg stone on the left and 2 kg sand on the left. Look at the sand molecules are huge as against the stone indicating yes, the, the um, small dense LDL are plenty, which means more particles equal to more plaques, more plaques equal to more instability, more instability is more rupture, more rupture is more morbidity and mortality due to cardiovascular disease. We don't need to go all this. Now there is a non-HDL cholesterol paradox. What is this paradox? This is one of the Chinese studies. That they always come with paradoxes. They were the one to start COVID-19 also. And they are the one to suffer now, which is biting them back. So they said, why respect non-HDL all the time? Come with the uh, this concept of non-HDL paradox. What is this paradox? Look at the top red line. That is uh, um, a non-HDL cholesterol of less than 2.2. And the lower green, uh, the blue one, is more than 2.2. It showed that you would normally expect red should not be there because higher the non-HDL cholesterol, there should be good response. But these patients had more deaths. Now what was the cause for this non-HDL paradox? A paradox associated with baseline non-HDL and a long-term all-cause mortality. And this is mainly because of the malnutrition. And how does malnutrition contribute to the non-HDL paradox is not really well known. Could be because there are albumin binding gets screwed up in the blood. That could be one of the reasons, but we really don't know. So finally, we have, this is the last slide, and clinicians treat patients and not the uh, meta-analysis. Uh, if you just make the patient sit in front of you, uh, you would know the numbers, but you have to tell him what is cholesterol. And so what should be for Indians then? We have more diabetes, we have more obesity, we have more metabolic syndrome, more high TG, atherogenic dyslipidemia, and hence non-HDL is almost an identical indicator or, uh, or target. 
So according to NAI, non-HDL is a co-primary target as important as LDL for lipid lowering. In individuals, in all individuals, in your know, clinics or the hospitals, the non-HDL should be not higher than 30 milligrams. Suppose you bring LDL to 40, your non-HDL should be 70. So you don't need to go through all this. Light intensifying lifestyle is extremely important if you want to bring down the non-HDL effectively. This is uh, one of the extreme risk group on the right, which is recently introduced by LAI. Uh, you could make out that this, this is an extreme risk group there. Whatever, whether you are in the first one or the last one, the lifestyle is what is extremely important in non-HDL. Increase the lifestyle measures. The more the risk, for example, compared to low risk ASCVD and extreme risk ASCVD, higher the risk, higher the lifestyle, better the results. And this is an extremely important point to realize. This is one of the uh, journals uh, I somehow uh, came to be uh, in touch with this on my flight to Amsterdam almost 15 years ago. You can see that um, how ladies are uh, then and how ladies are now, end of an hourglass era. Now this is the hourglass deformity, which women are jealous of their own women colleagues who are hourglass. There is, uh, there is uh, um, a story in Mahabharata. Draupadi was taking bath in the uh, lake and you know that uh, she had a lot of colleagues with her and she was an epitome of beauty and all her female friends when she was bathing they expressed wish I was a man so this is how the beauty of a femininity is being always respected but over years, not just women, even men, pregnant men are not uncommon, postmenopausal pregnant women paradoxically are not uncommon. Therefore, you can see that in today's world, the 46% are rectangular females, but males are no better. That's why it is thin fat Indian. Now, diet is very important, you all know that one has to go for Mediterranean diet. I had one patient, diabetic patient, a Brahmin patient. He was a priest and uh, he followed with me for about 10 years. And at the end of 10 years, always he used to ask me, Sir, allow me to eat some sweets. HB A1C was always 7, 7.2. And I said, this guy is teasing me so much. I said, I tell you, what the chamcha satnarana prasada can You can eat one teaspoon of satnarana prasada. This guy maintained HP1C of 7 for many years and one day he came after 3 months, 324 milligrams of blood glucose. I said, What is the end? I said, I said, I said, I said, I advising diet to the patient and uh, always depend on exercise as I said at all times. Now you may ask me, yesterday we had a brainstorming session, many of you attended the morning yoga session and now is there an alternative to exercise? I think many of us ask this question. Of course there is. The best alternative to exercise is hospitalization. <laughs> so you get ready to get hospitalized whenever you are not exercising. So, summary, you could add azetimibe, icosapentyl type to reduce non-HDL further. You know that the reduced trial is uh, in a bit of uh, problem. This is the last slide. Um, so, uh, this is our Prime Minister, uh, who uh, we always think, whenever we pose this glass, a very internationally well-known joke, um, the negative people think the upper half of the class, the life is boring, it's negative, I'm not getting the girl I want, my children are not smart and brilliant. And those who think, oh, life is great, I've got two legs, I've got two eyes, I can walk, so I'm kind, God is kind. So half empty, the negative attitude, half full, the positive attitude. But our Prime Minister said, it is neither. 
Why did he say it is neither? He said when it is half full with water, the upper half is half full with the air. Therefore, it's never empty. There is half water, there is half air. That's what you should have an attitude while treating your patients with ASCVD. Have an attitude of positivity that you get them out, not if LDL, take it to knowledge. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. You have aptly addressed the unmet needs in lipid lowering goals. You have shown other than H uh, LDL, there are many other atherogenic lipoprotein parameters carrying above B, that is uh, non-HDL cholesterol. So, uh, you have shown it is as strong a predictor or a more powerful predictor of future CHD risk, hence the appropriateness of sure, considering non-HDL cholesterol as a co-primary target uh, in therapy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.